Hello there, you're welcome to The Opinion. It's now time of the week where we get to bring you intriguing issues and meaningful issues in the world of politics and more. My name is Eugene Evans. Of course, I am Wokoma Givity. Of course, it's that time we'll talk about trendy issues that affect us as a people in Africa. Let's move into the headlines for today. In Rwanda, the government of Rwanda has deployed the help of five high-tech robots to help fight the coronavirus pandemic in the country. Now, quite an interesting story has resurfaced on social media. Now, in 1975, I Ghana's first ever world champion, David Kote, popularly known as uh, DK Poison, loaned an amount of 45,000 US dollars out of the 75,000 US dollars awarded to him after defending a title against Japan's uh, Fukuyama. Now, he loaned it to the government then, led by Colonel Ichampo. Up until now, he hasn't received that money. Now, the question we are asking is, why has it taken the government this long to actually attend to this young man? We've got a lot of revelation to touch on on this particular issue. And then later on, we'll do some entertainment. Yes, I know it's been a while we did some entertainment right here on The Opinion Show. We'll be talking about the relevance of beef in a music industry. Stick and stay. We'll be right back with more after this break. V Nation Pictures is a production firm in Ghana aimed at becoming the renowned production company in Africa and beyond. Services rendered include film production and editing, shooting of TV commercials and videos, photo shooting, event coverage such as wedding, engagement, parties, funerals, etc. Locate V Nation Pictures inside King Solomon's Heights on the Tampolini Street of the Community 18 Road. Contact V Nation Pictures on 030 Three nine six two seven seven six or zero two four zero two eight nine nine five two for booking inquiries. You can also reach us on. All right, guys, welcome back from that quick break. Let's move into the story for today. The government of Rwanda has deployed the help of five robots in Rwanda to help fight the spread of the coronavirus pandemic in the country according to them this this um, robot has the um, capability to um, test 50 to 150 people in um, a minute um, um eugene considering the fact that um, rwanda is one of the african countries that have less cases of coronavirus and according to them they have 308 cases and they've so said uh, they have succeeded uh, in treating about 200 and um, nine to eight people so what do you think about this is it, to me it's a cool development uh, i think i think it's it? good because and one of the reasons it was stated in a report one of the reasons why they actually brought this um, robot is just to help the health personnel so those yes. who are the forefront or the front health workers, workers so yeah. that they don't get to make contact That's we usually people. hear the cases of some health workers actually contracting the virus in the uh, course of Treating, treating the, the people the and, and all of that. So I think this this actually is a way to go. And big ups to the government of, of Rwanda. Yeah. They are doing an amazing job. job. And I feel this will actually help them in a long way. Because at the end of the day, at a point in time, the health workers can't do it on their own. Yeah. I mean, we see some videos on social media where we see some of the health workers crying and all of that. Not because they are in pain or whatsoever. Because they, they feel they burdened. Feel yes, yeah. and feel burdened doing this too much, this job the all by themselves so i think this is the way to go and i'm expecting other african Country countries to actually it, emulate yeah. yeah and again there is this thing about the, the this robot we're talking about here they have this um ability to you know check people that are wearing nose masks and not like do some of the necessary tasks the the, the the health workers here are supposed to do i think it's actually a cool one because i think these people are very very serious about um this coronavirus Rwanda is a very serious, very serious country place. i mean if, if you ask me it's a very very serious country country and in from from uh, economic sector in every aspect of or every every sectors in the country they're actually doing an amazing, amazing job. an amazing job so i'm not i'm not surprised that they're actually doing this and i think every country has what it takes to actually emulate do that. that yes i don't see why nigeria can't do that to the, like to me i i actually think mm. instead of going in for the um coronavirus for now mm. to help um the spread of this thing is just to, you should just get the the the, the robots in a hospital at least in nigeria because and in ghana here too so that um this because this happens to be the places where the coronavirus um issues are actually shooting up and all that yes because in, i think in ghana is up to six thousand yeah seven about, to six thousand nigeria too is the same uh, mm. uh, um uh, amount of um or the number uh, of cases number of cases so i think going for the robots is just the best way for us so that our health um, workers wouldn't be risking their life 
You get what I'm saying? So it will help um, reduce the amount of coronavirus numbers we have in our state. For now, we are talking about getting the cure or getting the remedies for it. But for now, I think going for the robots, it's better. Nigeria, we can afford this. If Rwanda can do this, Ghana and Nigeria and the rest of the African countries can actually do this. I think they can it's also better. do it. I mean, considering the fact that you go to some, some hospitals, they are not enough personnel there to actually take care of the people and yeah. all of that when you bring in these robots well i won't say that people are going to lose their job i don't think so it will rather assist to actually Hell. lessen the burden yeah. actually on this health person okay, okay now can you imagine that mm. this um, robot actually tests 50 to 150 people in a minute wow and in and, a minute and it's something you have to um you know <laughs> And it comes as no surprise that when you talk about the cases, they have lower, lower cases. Lower cases and yes, because kind of at the end of the day, if that. you are able to actually test people early, yes. you are able to treat, treat them, them because some people actually recover anyway. Not everyone actually die. Can you That's, imagine? So they're having like three hundred and you understand? Because exactly. This is one they are really, really making, have like making five thousand, six really thousand. They're they making make, making it go. It's a way to go. That yeah. that if every other African country, I don't know about. No, I, I think Ghana can actually do that. I don't know yeah. about Nigeria. Gifty, you're Nigerian. Do you yes. think Nigeria can actually do that? Yes, we can do that. But even if we can't do it, what is wrong with us going to ask um, them how can No, we why can't you do it as, as a country? In case, I know we can do it, mm. but in case we can't do it, I think we have to go to, um, go to seek for help from Rwanda. I think know how and why they, how they come up with their own. You understand? Considering Nigeria to be more populated and all that, I think we have the capability to do it. Yes. But if we can't do it, I am humbly saying we go ask them how they did their own. <laughs> Instead of <laughs> us fighting um, uh, uh, um, COVID-19 Madagascar cure, let's get the robots yes, whilst first. we are waiting for the cure and all because that. Because even with the vaccine, I've heard that just like Ebola, it took about five years for them to know that this is the right vaccine and then to be cleared for people to actually use it. Five good years. So you can imagine waiting for the cure will actually take you like forever so in the meantime being able to trace people early yeah. and treat them early is it's actually better. the way to go so I, i'm i'm just but talking about nigerians going mm. to meet rwanda we, uh, late last week um we realized that um nigerian medical uh, pharmaceutical association they were like they they feel belittled that where why will madagascar bring the the, the covid19 um um vi what do you call vaccine. it vaccine vaccine to africa to nigeria to use they have more more lecturers they have more university like they compare so it to what are you so, no, so what the question is if you don't have if mm. you with all your qualification and all the university and you're not you have, producing you can't results produce anything results cool then, to help so what is the essence so of boasting that saying that we have this we have it and at, at the end and of the day, day you don't have any results to show for it i i don't know i don't know for so them, this is what actually mm. you were saying about the madagascar mm. um covid 19 um the vaccine. So now, telling them to go to Rwanda to ask for, I think they still still feel too big and this thing to go. But anyways, why is it all feeling too big there? People, people are, are shooting up and people are dying. Yes. So you have to bring your ego down and go down to ask them for whatever it is they did to help uh, reduce the number of cases they have in their country. Well, that's the way to go. Let's look at our next story. Very very interesting, interesting. story there. And Gifty is very, I say it's very heartbreaking, especially when you put yourself in the shoes of this this actually this world champion now okay. i'm talking about i, I mentioned early on in my, my introduction show, yeah. that this young man actually in the in the year 1976 between 1975 and 76 actually he actually won a fight against um um japan's uh, japan's a uh, japan boxer, boxer yeah. and then he was awarded an amount of seventy-five thousand us dollars wow that's now, then. then that's wow. a huge that's amount a huge of money even now and the government's then led by you know a champo came to the management and says that you know what yeah. the country then was facing some hardship economically okay. so you know what can you please lend us or loan us forty five thousand out of that amount okay for us to actually uh, import or so, so to speak import macro some canned macro in macro, order to like, mitigate the harsh economic uh, condition that the, the country was facing there yeah. now up until now this man hasn't received his amount like really? the money the money but, and but, I hear last, just last year, September 2019, yeah. the incumbent government, which led by President Tukufuado, mm. invited him. And then because he's been complaining about this thing over the years, he's been to the hospital to treat, like he's been sick for a while. There are times he doesn't have money to money even to treat feed. and all of that. Wow. So they invited him into the, into the, whether the Jubilee House, what they call the Jubilee House now, to meet the president. Yeah. And the president assured him that they are going to give him the amount. Now, 
up until now he hasn't received it i mean wow. as far as information has it he hasn't received it and i like um uh, one of ghana's musicians Musician, actually put yeah. it on his social media platform and they got everyone talking, talking about, about it, it that but 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 um mm. talking about that one why don't you think pro probably they've given probably the manager or someone has taken this money yeah, and no, he's here that's that's actually what some people are actually saying that maybe his management might have taken, taken that money, the money but they haven't informed him because back then you know back then 1975 or 76 and some again, people are not really serious about their contract and all of that so there is no paperwork to actually show, show as an evidence no to show that okay you know what they are owing i i'm not so sure about it but that's this is what i'm thinking yeah Let's, because if actually it's the hmm. whatever money he gave to the government then was hmm. actually based on trust trust me he will find it very difficult to collect it back because currently we don't we, can, we don't even know whether you're lying or you're actually saying the truth whether you, probably your management has taken it before now and you're coming out too but i'm saying that the fact that the president of ghana has actually invited you means that there's a little bit of truth, truth somewhere. In there, yeah. so why are we waiting last year september 2019 we're in wow. 2020 why are we doing wow. this thing too this is a legend in the game and he has actually done something for the country why are we doing this to him we don't have to treat uh, but i i even um mm. it's something that has to do with um africa in general mm. like I, I, this thing about mm. africa like our heroes you understand there are people that have done something for the country not only for the country for the continent and at large but it's as if at a probably they neglect you i mean after some period of time mm. you are packed one Somewhere side because there are new people and that is why now, we get our footballers saying mm. i wouldn't play for this country i wouldn't play for it's my not country we're dying for and all yeah, of that not and i'm sure you can be saying because for now, it's about 40 something years now i mean Come on. that you have it's taken that long for you to pay in this amount and i'm sure every time wherever he's seated right and that's if he hasn't and i keep saying if because we are not certain about if the it. government has Pain. truly paid them Pain. i doubt though i doubt that but honestly have been. in the exception of this even this matter is something that has to do with africans mm. please whatever it is we have people that have that were there for us that represented us that made us proud they paved the way you know, there are people that new people when they come out you know that this person i am i'm proud of this person it I, happens I'm proud everywhere I'm in, a, person. in a in a like in a that. in a movie industry we see the veterans now they are always crying so raising for fans people. because they are not well they are raising for fans, fans for so actually take care of them. That. what Ooh. happens to we having some fans set aside for the aged you know the veterans and all of that whether in every discipline whether football whether uh, um, boxing Bollywood whether movie, yes the movies industry. and all of that Honestly. let's let's take our minds back and you know let's not neglect our because own it looks as if at our, over after a period of time we get to dump them yes and use the new people and after using the new people we still get to dump them and pick other people they, as, they don't motivate uh, um, people because there is this um um former um Nigerian player Samo Parachi, something like that. The mother came out and was like, The government has not been helping out mm. with some stars and all that. Some people came out with like, Oh, the government was paying here 30,000 there every month. Come on, Samo Parachi used to be somebody that actually brought Nigeria, like pictured Nigeria, Africa as, as, as a whole, to the world to see. You know, so he was one of the best football players at that day. Mm. But what's happening now? Because he's dead, actually, he died on the field. Like, he died playing for his country. And this is the mother over there. The one was looking all old. Nobody's taking care of him and all that. I don't think they even, it's, it's, they it's, even it's, remember it's, him in, in it's, any it's, way. It's, so, on back to this case, I want to say big ups to Ochiame Kwame. Because he actually, actually brought this whole story to light once again. And I'm sure he's going to follow up to uh, on this particular Martha, issue. Yes. But I'm sure if there is a pres president watching us right now or a gov any government Please, official watching something. us i think we need to pay attention to this man because he has really been chasing this amount for a very very long time and come Please. on he deserves better dk poison has done a lot for this country, country and he deserves better now we've got more to touch on right here on the opinion show but let's take a breather we'll be right back after this break Of 
You're welcome back from that break. If you just joined us, you haven't missed that much. Yes, this is Studio Opinion right here on your favorite channel, VNTV. Now, let's do some entertainment. Now, beefing in the music industry isn't anything new. Now, over the years, we've witnessed beefs between Exdo and Chicago, Shatawale and Samini, Shatawale and Stoneboy, Shatawale and Sarko, dear, even Medical and Strongman. And just recently, the ladies have also given it a shot. Well, while some music lovers are of the view that uh, beefing doesn't add anything to the artist brand others also are of the strong view that it actually gives them opportunity to show us what they have and it even creates awareness for their brands and extensively it keeps the music industry lively but when all is said and done the question we are asking today is how relevant is beef in a music industry to help us with today's discussion we've been joined in the studios by an entertainment entrepreneur, a talent and events manager who has been in the game for 15 years and counting. He's actually worked with several Ghanaian artists like Kwao Kesi, SK Original, um, Kwesi Otenjo, Metal and the likes. And you cannot talk about the entertainment or the Ghanaian entertainment industry and leave his name out of it. I'm not, I'm talking about no other person than the one and only Yao. Lawson, yes, aka boss. Yao Bubbly. Yes, now, where did you get that name for the Bubbly? <laughs> yes, um, you know, all of us have, have been very youthful. I mean, teenagers. When we, were, uh, we went to um, senior high school, right. yes, you know, when you are at high school, obviously, you can't actually graduate without actually having a nickname or something. Nickname. Yes, so. Is it because you were a very lively, opinionated person? That's why they came Yes, I think uh, my name actually um, depicts or is kind of an epitome of my nature. Right. Okay. Obviously, yeah. So, I mean, they saw the way I actually mingled out with people, my my affable nature and all of that. And they right. gave me that name. Yes. Well, and I had no choice. <laughs> students will impose that. So, you just you. have to accept really? it and go yes, along with it. <laughs> now, let's talk about beefing. I mean, that's why you are here. Mm. I mean, we hear beefing and beefing all the time. What exactly is beefing? And what makes a beef a good one or a bad one? Considering the fact that, I mean, we hear people say that this, this song or this one doesn't know how to beef because the particular song is devoid of insults and mm. attacks. Others also say, oh, you have to go hard. That makes you the beef a very good one. Mm. I mean, what is that? Yeah, yeah, thank you for the opportunity. Actually, um, I think um, uh, music beef or probably um, local beef mm. is some, that kind of a, a conflict okay. of test between um, artists. artists. Uh, so, um, for instance, um, um, artists generally actually uh, are driven by um, ego, their ego. Mm. Okay. And then um, you see. Um, people might actually give themselves some titles and then they actually they, they, their brands are driven by the, their, their self-entitlement so for instance um, others use beef in a way to actually um, chase clouds okay you know and then others also they came come about um, beefing people because they feel um, one particular artist is getting all that attention and they're not probably they might think um, probably I'm not actually also getting I have what it takes to even be placed in this bracket. Right. Yeah. So for that matter, it's, it's a matter of proving a point through, mu through music, mm -hmm. you know. So for instance, it, it's actually been in existence. Looking at Ghana, actually, I think the first um, beef that caught the attention of the general public might be uh, the Esdo Chicago. Chicago. Yes, yeah. from my time, yeah, mm -hmm. I can actually recollect that. Um, how did it actually come to an existence? Um, I think um, it was a misunderstanding bef between both artists. I think when um, Ezo came out with his first single, I think it was a collaborative work between Ezo and then Chicago. But apparently when the song was released, we heard only the name Ezo. Wow. It means somebody wasn't giving the necessary um, recognition. recognition yeah. So for that matter, I think uh, Chicago on the other side felt cheated somehow. So for that matter, um, he needed to actually let people know that he actually contributed his quota to the success of the brand XO. Right. But then even from the initial state, we didn't even um, hear um, Chicago until as though did a particular song with Maba. Right. I uh, throw in shots all about you know, 
to Reggie Rockstone and then um, um, Chicago because actually I think Chicago was talking behind the scenes that yes I contributed at this I wrote the song for as though um, I did this number of verses which actually was factual but I don't know the agreements they had mm. during the recording process because um, when you look at the, uh, the 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 credits in the CD, mm -hmm. you, 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 as though uh, Chicago's name wasn't the giving that proper pro recognition. Recognition, yes. Right. So he started talking, back chatting, telling people. I mean, he felt cheated. Come on, kind yeah. of. So he started talking behind the scenes. I think it got to the attention of as though, and then he felt no, I have to give him back that response through music. And I think that's actually opened the plug gates for that beefing, beefing and all that. Ever since we've seen it, people are beefing each other. And, all and that. I think that particular song, um, is though also went hard at uh, Reggie Rockstone. And all of us didn't know why he actually has to go that hard, hard on, on Reggie Rockstone because we thought we, th we thought it, it was, was just him and then Chicago, Chicago, Chicago. Obviously, Reggie didn't give him that needed response. So that beef didn't even spice up at all. Right. But then. Chicago really came hard, hard on the guy at his door and then that is when people actually got to know oh, really Chicago was also an MC and yeah. the power to reckon with yeah. so what really makes a beef a very good like I, like I said early on yes I think um as I said from from early on I think um it is it's, it's, it's a, a kind of um a cloud chasing kind of venture okay first of all um others beef the colleague artists because probably they feel they've not been given the needed attention looking at their uh, pedigree mm. okay um probably i think you are, are right better i sing Can't better, better. But, uh, but then i'm getting that attention. attention and your attention will actually get your brand out there so probably some people might be good and might see others giving all the attention and yeah. and if he, he feels or probably he or she feels my brand is not getting that attention, attention. then he has to come hard at the one at the top all right you understand some also actually um try to throw in a challenge to prove that they are better they are also they are better or probably trying to also show their local prowess yeah, yeah. you understand they were punch line if exactly you the punch line. exactly so the beef usually some of them are ego driven okay. some of them are also intellectually driven probably he feels probably i can write better i can actually uh, give some bars to prove that yes i'm better than the one being healed or the one at the top so there's not like a good or bad beef. But, but, i mean as long as it's giving you the attention you want yeah from my experience and um, in the pr perspective i don't think um okay there's something like bad beef mm. okay because at the end of the day every artist or every brand needs that attention uh, okay yeah. that so i'm um, talking about beefing and replying beefs mm. um of what relevance is this to the music industry in ghana okay um final, uh, first of all let me actually look at the 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 the, the conflicting artists yeah mm. um both actually gain the attention of their uh, fans and the public in general and then the media mm -hmm. so it means they actually gain that kind of following numbers mm -hmm. and then secondly it gives the media that kind of content yeah to have something to portray to a project discourse, exactly a discourse to actually fill up the uh, content space yeah you get it so um usually people actually like controversial stuff things yeah like they say some people say contro yeah. controversy sells. It sells yeah 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 yes news is driven by controversy mm -hmm. so usually it gives the media also the opportunity to also garner that kind of discussion mm -hmm. and draw that attention also to their portals or probably their, their, their networks so it gives the media uh, that content and then tally is actually um try, proves a point okay artistically mm -hmm. for instance um if the one side writes better or probably responds better than the other one to the, the public might judge probably yeah, yeah. when it is their normal music 
Yeah. That perception might be going through homes. Oh, this person rides better than this. This person but, does different. But, but then when doing yeah. beef, yeah. that's when they she really go to social yes. attention. But social the, 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 the current one you're talking about, mm. the beef one you're talking about now, mm. that one, it's normal. It's something we see. But we realize that of late, the, mm. it has gone beyond that one. Like People mm -hmm. are coming out violently to, you know, physically to abuse themselves. Yeah, I think so what do you have to say on that one? I think that is the negative aspect. We were touching on the positive. Positive ones, yes, yeah. Yes, the negative aspect of the beef is what we are seeing now between Sister Fia and uh, and Frida Rhymes. Yeah. Um, let's take it back to the West Coast um, uh, there's due to Park and then um, yeah, Biggie. Biggie. Yeah. yeah in, from the beginning I think I thought um, they were actually having just local conflict. Mm. Yeah. But then when you listen to Tupac, I think beef in general, th 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 there are no benchmarks or probably um, um, a yastic, uh, a yastic or yeah. probably uh, the kind of where the, the, limits, the yeah. limits, limits to what, to what you can, can say in the, yeah. in the, yeah. on the record. Yeah. So if you listen to to Pax hit him up, he even threatened to even make sure the children of Biggie Smalls doesn't even grow, and that was mm. a serious, so serious one. Was, yeah. yes. Serious one. It's a murder threat. Mm. Mm. You understand? But the American music industry took it lightly. Until guns started popping. That is how dangerous beef can degenerate. Yeah. So, just as you said, probably sometimes it might start from just mere local yeah. cloud chasing venture. Because I realize um, some people can't actually con like contain this lyrical things they do. They believe the best way to retaliate is to go to the person like those kind of things what, they what, do what, what is important about um music and people who are actually into music i want to talk to some of these artists that are beefing that mm. beefing makes spiced up the industry music industry actually, like it's for entertainment and all that it's exactly. purely <laughs> entertainment it generates a lot of conversations because sometimes the media gets so dull cold. and the, the cold and you may be looking for especially that especially now everywhere is coronavirus exactly yeah exactly. Uh -huh. like something and to you see, with 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 this sister here and freedom yeah, arms yeah. i think if you came in came with with an element of surprise he is predominantly known as a, as a singer. singer yeah and then here we are she came with strong punch lines like, yeah <laughs> to the existing rappers and then this actually came as a wake-up call mm. to the yeah. rappers mm -hmm. and they also came to show their worth mm -hmm. and if you are not actually being that abreast with what goes into rap rap yeah. <laughs> got emotional yeah about it. and just as i said from the beginning the tupac west coast um biggie biggie and all of that it also started like a beef mm -hmm. until guns started coming out popping out you understand so it depends on how the parties involved with this beef handle it exactly mm -hmm. You understand because but, like you said from, from a mm, PR, PR perspective mm, this is an opportunity for you to to so, show your you know you can as, do beyond exactly, that exactly you can mm, do beyond that and it mm, gives you numbers so why way. don't you take advantage of but it honestly honestly like um currently mm. i didn't know mm. Ghanaians have um strong female rappers to now mm, like exactly. i realized those guys they have the strong punch lines i was like what exactly. now you guys have honestly yeah some of us in the industry we already knew mm. them Okay. I knew you know, I knew uh Frida Rhymes. There are even others because they couldn't actually get management to actually push them. They died out. They died out. There was the serious rappers out there. Wow. But you see someone like um Eno. Mm -hmm. Eno have been in existence. Yeah. I've known Eno since the year two thousand and nine. Really? That's a little bit. I saw wow. an old video of hers. I think like a Sahari girl. Yes. Wow. The girl was killing. But you know, then, yes. Punch, has been, serious Eno ones. has been in existence. But you see, uh, this is our industry and the rap industry has been more male-dominated. Male, yeah. You understand? So the, the females are not even given that recognized recognition. Yeah. So I think Eno still was pushing his, his round. I think last two years or so, he, she was the only female rapper amongst the males. Yeah, wow. Obvious. I actually rooted for her because mm. I knew her well. What she can do. And technically, I knew what she was about. You get it. But how many of the voting public 
understand the technicalities of her craft. Yeah. Right. You understand? Yes. So what she did in this beef era didn't come to a surprise to some of us. But it was a point to prove to the general public that yes, she's better. Like she's been I there. Did, I did. I did. I did. I did. I did. You understand? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So I think it didn't come to a surprise to me. But I think it, this is the time to also um, talk to artists like you know that they they've been sleeping on their own brand. Yes. You understand? Because it, it doesn't have to take a singer. So to actually push, to pull to push you out, that like, hard, out to like, prove a yeah, point. Yeah. Yeah. You understand? Yes. Yeah. So. I give uh, I, I give the uh, if he a lot of credit because first of all he's not a known rapper, rapper. and she came to prove a point to us at well. I think she, she released the song yesterday and it came Street, as a surprise yeah. to everybody. Yes, so I think uh, that is one uh, uh, positive aspect of the whole beef, and then also I think um, many of these. Uh, 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 artists who actually aspire to also do uh, beef shouldn't also think that anytime you come after any artist, probably you might try to get your shine. Sometimes you might become unlucky. Yeah. La, yeah. Yes, because the strategy probably is no used to bounce back. Yeah. Work for her because probably she's an experienced rapper. Yeah. How, do you know how many rappers have been hitting, hitting at Sako there? And he has and he hasn't, he hasn't shaked. <laughs> because I was actually watching, um, I was listening to DKB attacking uh, MDK, like MDK, medical yeah. and all that. Yes. I was like, ah, what <laughs> is happening? The last time I checked, DKB is actually a comedian. So, what has yeah. that got to do with DKB being a rap because of. Um, I mean, we've seen instances, mm. the shutter one day and mm. Stone, Stone Boy is mm. pulling a gun and all, mm. announces they fear. What, what mm. can we do? I mean, maybe, what I do don't you know, think? Think musical or whatever, mm. what can be done so it doesn't get far? Now, obviously, I think um, when um, it's unfortunate, first of all, let me say it's unfortunate that mm -hmm. um, Stephia has taken it. So another, we can see it on another, our another level right now as, yes. as he's talking. Another level. Window. Another level is quite unfortunate. Mm. I think the law enforcement agency have to step in wow. and, and and straighten up things just as they did with Stonewall and Shatterwall. Well, yes. Um I've seen this beef thing um, degenerate fans even fighting at yes. events venues and all mm. of that. It creates a lot of tension Essential. within the industry. Um I remember um when Samini was coming, mm, his first introduction, he did a very a song. And true shot at that time we called it raga, right. yeah. not dancehall as we call mm. it now. He, he, he threw shot at all the people in that journal that do this. Yeah. Uh, uh, um, Ronnie coaches, mm. the little Ronnie coaches, may yes. so rest in peace mm. of book back. Uh, Sonny Bali, mm. uh, 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 Yogi Dogi, and all those people within the raga dancehall. Yeah. you know uh, fraternity, fraternity that time and then ronnie coaches didn't take it lightly at all i think it was one of photo uh, video shoots of i think for for and then samini being friends of forest for appeared and then Forest for uh, godfather was ronnie and ronnie was present immediately he saw samini he got infuriated and attacked him wow Yes, physically. Wow. Yes. It didn't become that much of public talk because they settled it behind the scenes. So you see how people actually mm. handle it. Handling. I was expecting Ronnie Coaches to go back to the studio. Yes, and, and then he had to back, back to, to him. Exactly. But Ronnie decided to go, go physical. physically. That is one unfortunate aspect about beef. So I think most of the artists should be educated. Mm -hmm about this beef thing mm. because this same Ronnie coaches did a song and then they threw a subtle shot at tiny hey, na Ali Ali che. Che. you know the same person who attacked samini for attacking him mm. in his song did say to, to someone some, it's tiny and tiny went to the studio and hit harder at pullback right then you understand and it's been going back and forth back and forth like that 
So I think it, it, it should remain on the records, yeah. and not physical. Yeah, it shouldn't go violently like yes. that. Yes. So I think even after the to pack a big stuff, I think the American security agencies stood on their grounds and let them understand that yo, if you pull a gun at your brother, you will go to jail. Yeah, yeah, there should be a law on that. Exactly. So we we so already have the laws good. here. Yes. Yes. When you go uh, physically, physically to attack in anybody, is mm. the assaults, yeah. and, and if you treat in anybody, the laws so in Ghana, the law. or you face the law. So I think the the, the law uh, enforcement enforcement agency are already on the red alert, but they shouldn't take when beefs are going on. They shouldn't they should wait till it, it, it gets generate. too serious. Exactly. Exactly. But sometimes we all see us as entertainment. For me, personally, I enjoy. I also I enjoy. I enjoy. I enjoy. The last time I saw like like was it Fantana <laughs> saying, My teeth, nobody should tell me anything about my teeth and all that. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So it's, it's business. That is how you can easily sell mm -hmm. out events. events yeah. You understand? Events that's not shrouded with controversies. It, it doesn't sell. sell. Yeah. Yes. It won't sell. Well, yeah. Personally, I also think that, I mean, if you're an artist out there, don't take things personal. This is an opportunity for you to show your talent into the world. Show us what you got. Yeah, <laughs> bring some good of, some good level of competition exactly. in the yeah. culture. Mm. Whether it's fueled by personal very, very, yeah. feuds mm. or um, uh, some Cloud friendly chasing. competition whatsoever. Mm. Take mm. advantage, write on it and show us what you got. Mm. Thank you very much, uh, Yao Lawson, for showing up. I enjoyed Making the discussion. Up. You enjoyed the discussion. Yeah. So you want more? So you come, you come again. No problem. I'm always at All right. Service. So that was Yao Lawson, an entertainment entrepreneur. And of course, he's into events and talent management also. All right. So that's just about it for today's edition of The Opinion right here on VNTV. My name, as always, is Eugene Evans. And I've been doing this with... Of course, my name is Okoma Gifty. You can see, follow me on my Instagram page at Gifty underscore Adda. For those of us liking my outfit, you can follow my stylist on her social media handle, Instagram handle, sorry, um, at shine underscore Adda. It's what it is. Now, please don't forget to get interactive via your social media platforms. On Facebook, it's VNTV. On Instagram and YouTube, it's VNation TV. And do download our app on Google Play Store. Same time, same station. Next week, we'll be here to shut it down like always. See you next time.